Oh, how's it going? It's Monday. Hello, Internet. Hi, it's me, Jason. Did you miss me? I took one day off Friday. Kind of felt good. I don't know. It's weird to take a day off with like n nothing to do. Went to Stillwater, Hudson. Nice to visit that part of the state. Did a little bike ride. It was great. Hope you had a nice weekend. Boy, the sun was out. The weather was nice. Uh, today's weather is okay. It's okay. It's below average, but it's going to be all right. We'll get up to uh, the low 60s today. Kind of cloudy. Looking outside. Yeah, kind of a cloudy day right now. Uh, this week it's going to be cold. We'll be in the 50s. Our lows will be in the upper 30s. Hopefully, well, gosh, in some parts of Minnesota, we'll probably uh, kiss freezing as well. So I uh, hope you did what we tell you to do, which is to wait till Mother's Day before you plant your garden, or you may need to cover some stuff up this week. Let's talk about this. It is Teacher Appreciation Week. What a weird year for teachers, right? Doing most of their teaching from home, distance learning, students online because of COVID-19, crisis causing teachers to take extra steps to connect with their students. And well, parents are learning more uh, about how hard it is to be a teacher. A new survey by Osmo shows that 80% of parents say they have more respect for teachers now than they did a few months ago. 70% say they realize being a teacher is much harder than their own job. So we wonder what you have to say about this. Do you have a teacher you want to give a shout out to? Do you value teachers more now than you did before? If you're watching on the WCCO TV Facebook page, leave a comment right there. We'll share some of yours in just a moment. A Minnesota community has been named the next potential hotspot for COVID-19 cases in the country. But hold on, New York Times. New York Times wrote an article just looking at case numbers in cities and how fast they've been growing over the past two weeks. And St. Cloud came in first place by a fairly large margin. But the mayor there, Dave Kleiss, emphasized, look, the spike in cases is because of ramped up testing. St. Cloud mainly located in Stearns County, which had coronavirus outbreaks at meat processing plants in Cold Spring and in Melrose. There's, you know, there's an aspect of uh, not wanting to, to create fear or panic, so you've got to really look at the numbers and analyze where they are. No cities report numbers. All the numbers in Minnesota are reported by county. So we looked at this and thought, like, all right, is St. Cloud just making excuses here? Is this a real deal? And the Department of Health says, look, don't pin this on St. Cloud, and there's nothing really to be concerned about. The rise in cases in Stearns County is because they've had those outbreaks at meat processing plants there. And then they set up drive through testing. We're very aggressive. And so that is what the spike is about. So as I always say, butt out, New York Times. Mind your own business. It's not what I always say, but it's fine. President Donald Trump now saying the coronavirus death toll could reach 80 to 90,000. Last month he was saying that we we're looking at 50 to 60,000 deaths. President Trump also making, his head, uh, making headlines today for his prediction about a vaccine. Well, I think we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year. Now, the doctors would say, well, you shouldn't say that. I'll say what I think. I've met with the heads of the big companies. These are great companies. Yeah, I think we're going to have a vaccine uh, much sooner rather than later. This is a little different than our last time. President hall. said that President last night in a televised country. virtual town hall from the Lincoln from Memorial. The U.S. public and health officials uh, have said a vaccine is likely a year to 18 months away. But as the president alluded to, he is optimistic. He said his administration will release a report this week detailing what he was briefed on in early January as the virus was emerging. A lot of questions about uh, what sort of warning the United States had and whether the president took it seriously. 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl revealed last night that she did indeed battle and recover from COVID-19. After two weeks at home in bed, weak, fighting pneumonia, and really scared, I went to the hospital. I found an overworked, nearly overwhelmed staff. Every one of them was kind and sympathetic, gentle and caring from the moment I arrived until the moment days later when I was wheeled out through a gauntlet of cheering medical workers. The medical workers so say they need to recognize the victories against this virus as well, and that's why they cheer every recovered patient. Leslie Stahl says she's doing well now. She is 78 years old. 
Last night during a virtual town hall, Vice President Mike Pence was asked about his trip to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Remember, got so much attention because he was not wearing a face mask. I, I didn't think it was necessary, um, uh, but I should have worn the mask at the Mayo Clinic. Vice President sort of stuck out, got a lot of headlines for this. He was the only one not wearing a mask last Tuesday. Uh, it is Mayo Clinic policy that anybody going through the clinic, visitors, everybody needs to wear a mask. Uh, two days later, the vice president did wear a mask when he visited a GM plant. Uh, so he admitted, messed it up, and we're done. Former President George W. Bush calling for an end to partisanship in the fight against COVID-19. Let us remember that empathy and simple kindness are essential, powerful tools of national recovery. Uh, former president releasing this video saying after 9-11, he saw a great nation rise as one to honor the brave, to grieve with the grieving, and to embrace unavoidable new duties. President Trump wrote on Twitter that the former president was nowhere to be found during Trump's impeachment trial. So there's that. New rules starting today at Costco for wearing masks. All shoppers and employees must wear them at all times, which I'm glad to see. I went to Costco last week, and I, it freaked me out a little bit, to be honest with you. Not that many people wearing masks. Children under two will not have to wear them. Also, if you are one of the seven people flying right now, Delta Airlines, you got to wear a mask the whole time you're flying, which is smart. I mean, if I were a flight attendant, I would absolutely be insisting on this. Uh, you can take that mask down to eat, but you should be wearing the mask throughout the flight. New effort launching today in hopes of helping restaurants, cafes, bars, bakeries stay alive during the state shutdown. This is brand new to the Twin Cities, just launching. It's called Save Twin Cities Eats. It's a digital platform that was online and on Instagram. It offers kind of a one-stop shop for customers to go to buy local offers from restaurants. Not just like buying some food. It's like here's a take, here's you know something unusual, or here's a cooking class, or here's a special tour. This launched in Philadelphia and Washington D.C. and saw a lot of success. Uh, since then, they've raised half a million dollars in revenue. Um, and really started a movement. And Save Twin Cities Eats does not keep any money from the businesses they partner with. All the money spent through the website goes directly to the business. So if you want to check it out, there are only a couple things on there right now. Uh, but you can check it out and go to WCCO.com slash community. For the first time, murder hornets have been found in the United States. That's cool. Their venomous sting can kill you if you get stung several times. Uh, so you think, hey, no big deal. Beekeepers will just put on their suit. They'll be fine. Nope, they can puncture a beekeeper's suit. So we're all in quarantine, and now these jerks show up. Hornets are more than two inches long. have reportedly been attacking beehives in Washington. Oh, gosh, just look at that. All right, enough. Enough with that. Show me some flowers. Well, first cars because they're lined up to drive through the University of Minnesota's Landscape Arboretum. Murder hornets. Do we need that story? I feel like, I feel like the media is just trying to make us feel bad. I'm trying to make people feel good. Here's some tulips. We're so glad the Arboretum opened up. People got a chance to drive around there. 15 bucks a car. You have to have a reservation to do it. They're sold out through next Monday because we all need some joy in our lives. Not murder hornets, WCCO.com slash links. Uh, let me show you this story because it's, it's kind of dumb, but kind of silly. Western Wisconsin mom and her five kids had a bit of an adventure. They were trying to find something fun to do in isolation. Tara Blazing says, hey, I heard about this car parade that's going on. So the kids load up in the minivan. Uh, they put on costumes because, you know, everyone's bored and you're trying to figure out stuff for fun. And so Tara gets in line and notices, I think my car is different from everyone else's. These are all muscle cars, vintage cars, luxury cars. Her sweet, sweet town and country minivan perhaps was not in the right parade. I just sat there for a minute and then I saw like some people sort of like waving and I wasn't sure if they were waving at me or what. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna pull in. And so I found a parking spot and I just sat there for like a minute and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do, what do I do? 
and the twins um, were like, oh, mom, you know, this is so cool. You know, I would have just turned around and gone home, but you know what? You can't disappoint those kids. So there you go. Pretty good. She thought it would just be funny, and instead, I think she said it was a little awkward. But her pictures have been shared thousands of times on Facebook, and she got on the news. So well done. May the 4th be with you and with your spirit. Grab your lightsabers because it's Star Wars Day, and to celebrate Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is actually going to start streaming on Disney Plus today. Uh, that's about two months earlier than scheduled. Yep, there's your lightsaber. So please celebrate safely. It is Teacher Appreciation Week, and we are asking you your thoughts on uh, teachers here as everybody is kind of learning from home. I'm reading through some of your comments here on the Facebook page. Jessica saying, my first grader's teacher dropped off a May Day basket. How cool is that? Teachers going above and beyond to make sure our kids are coping with all the changes to their little lives. Samantha says, I am a high school math teacher. So we salute you, Samantha. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Nicole says, you know, I appreciate them. I was an educator. Um, and she empathizes with those educators right now. This is what I was talking about with some friends this weekend. Teachers not only are teaching, but they're also, they have to do distance learning often with their own kids. So you're like, that's, it's just like all of us, you know, people working from home trying to do your job and teach as well. So we appreciate those teachers. I don't know, I feel like, do I appreciate them more? I, I don't know. Like, I appreciate you guys all the time, but it's good that more people are being aware of it, I suppose. That's it for the 734. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll be back here again tomorrow.